we need all the sets to still cover this set? Yes? Well, I claim I could throw out the first one and it'd still be covered by the others. Yeah? Okay. So the answer to the first one is, well, no, I, I can throw some away. So notice that uh, in the first example, one half, uh, so Vn, which is, goes from 3 to infinity, has a subcover. It has lots of different subcovers, but here's one. How about Vn that goes from uh, 122 onward? Would you agree this still covers the set? Would you agree I could throw away the first few intervals and still cover the set? Yes? OK. What's that? The first very, very many. How about the first million? I could throw them away. And the rest still cover. Yes? OK, good. Uh, let's see. Um, what about this cover? Does it do? I can't throw away it. I, I can't throw away the one that's there. That's right. So this actually has a subcover, but the only subcover is the one that uh, the original cover. Okay. What about this one that contains uncountably many? Can I can I throw away some of these sets? Willie's nodding. Yes. What, how many can you throw away? Do you want to throw a lot? Throw as many. Throw a lot away. Give me a cover that, so Wx uh, has a subcover consisting of, OK, you could choose just the rational points. That would certainly be a subcover. There's probably even, there's even a smaller one. I could think of a smaller one. How about one that's centered at, uh, let's say, um, it's centered at uh, the point a half. And, uh, well, here, let's make it easier on ourselves. Five tenths. Uh, if it's centered at six tenths, these are a radius a tenth, right? So they'll overlap. Seven tenths, eight tenths, and I think, I think that's enough. No? Nine tenths. Would you agree this is a subcover? Not only is it a subcover, there's only finitely many of them. So it is a finite subcover. Are you with me? This is the picture. It <laughs> looks something like this. It's just, there are just a few sets here, like so. One, they just overlap like this. And I think that covers everything from one to a half. Everybody with me here? OK, so why, why do we care so much about open covers? Well, that will become apparent uh, shortly. Uh, let's see here. Let's do, um, let's do one more example. How about the following? Suppose I took um, this set. Uh, how about 0, 1? By NR, I'm telling you what metric space I'm in so you know what set to pick the, the open sets from. Okay, so uh, would you agree it has a cover by, um, by the same sets here, Vn, except Vn doesn't cover what? Or zero, so I should throw in a few things extra. So by the Vn uh, and Union, so I'm going to throw in by the VN union a set containing, I'll call this W0 and W1. Oh, actually, it's good. I like it. It's actually used the same notation here. <laughs> okay. So it'll be W0 and W1 basically cover the endpoints. 0, 1. So uh, this, these special sets, purple sets, W0 just goes from minus one-tenth to a tenth, and one 
So this is w0 and w1. And all the other sets look like before. Would you agree this is a cover of this interval? Everybody say yes. OK. Do I need them all? Does it have a sub cover that's proper, that d doesn't use them all? Which ones can I throw away? I can throw, so does this suffer from the same problem as this? That is, does, does this uh, set have a, it has a subcover. Does it have a finite subcover? This one up here? No, because you, no matter how far you go, you won't, with only finally many sets, you will not cover everything, right? If you had, let's say, finally many sets, then there's a largest index. The largest index might be 22 million. Would you agree that that one set, the w sub 20, uh, v sub 22 million, wouldn't cover everything? It covers all the other sets, so you can throw the other ones away, but it won't cover the endpoint. So this creature does not have uh, a finite subcover, this cover. Whereas for this set, this cover does. It has a cover by this. And it has a finite subcover. A finite subcover is, uh, in particular, can you name one? How about W0, W1, and V11 would do? Happy? OK, great. We are ready now to make, a, make our definition for compact. So when, when I put up this definition, you, sh you should ask yourself, why is this somehow saying the set is small? Okay. So um, here's a definition. We're going to say uh, that a set K is compact, and usually, of course, you're referring to some metric space. But as you'll, we'll see later, we, 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 you don't actually have to refer to the metric space you're embedded in. But I'll put it here for now in parentheses. If every open cover of K contains a finite subcover. Okay. This is a huge definition, so I'll box it. A set is compact if every open cover of K contains a finite subcover. All right. So um, what is this saying? It's saying that if to show that a set is compact, you want to show that every open cover has a smaller subcover that's, in fact, finite. Okay? Or to say uh, another way, if you want to show a set is not compact, that means there is what? There is a single open cover that has no finite subcover. Okay? So I'll just say, so K is not compact means there exists some open cover with no finite subcover. OK. We can wrap our brains around this definition. Let's look at some of the examples. I, I claim in some of these examples, we've already perhaps seen that some of these things are not compact. Why? Well, uh, to show something not compact is actually pretty easy, right? You just have to find a single open cover that has no finite subcover, yes? So is 1 half 1 compact? No. What do you mean no? There's a cover that's finite. 